Smart TV is quickly becoming a redundant term. It's kind of like flat screen TV, right? In the same way that pretty much all TVs are now flat, most TVs are now also smart. And the idea behind a smart TV is that they're supposed to be convenient. They're supposed to make life more simple. But what I'm starting to notice is that smart TVs are actually starting to get pretty complicated. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and some recent snafus around smart TVs in the news got me thinking about how something that is supposed to be simple has actually started getting complicated. I know I've said in the past that TVs are starting to look more like computers than computer monitors, but I'm gonna walk that back right now because I think it's more accurate to say that in terms of smarts and horsepower, smart TVs are actually more like a mid-range smartphone. Pretty powerful compared to dumb TVs of the past, but I would argue they're actually not powerful enough and not protected enough either. To trot out the old Benjamin Parker trope again, shout out to my Spider-Man fans out there, with great power comes great responsibility. And I think we're at a really tricky time with smart TV development where they're becoming more powerful, but the responsibility of making sure they're a lifestyle enhancement and not a liability isn't getting enough attention. So instead of reveling in what's great about smart TVs, let's talk about what's not so great and what needs to be done to make smart TVs smarter and better because from where I'm sitting right now, smart TVs are kind of looking stupid. And if we don't demand changes, then maybe so are we. Before we dig into it, you know the drill. Start clicking some buttons if you end up liking this video and want to see more like it. And while you're down there, let me know in the comments so we can talk about this. Do you use the apps built into your TV or do you use an external device like a streaming box or a streaming stick or game console? Thanks for having fun with us. Welcome to the club. All right, let's do this. So let's start with the recent events that got me thinking about all this. The first one was when TCL released its first Google TVs and there were some problems initially. They were glitchy and problematic there for a little while. Best Buy even yanked them from their shelves for a short time. Those issues have been mostly resolved now, but the fact that they even happened was a pretty sharp reminder that life isn't as simple as turning your TV on, clicking HDMI 1, and watching whatever's on your cable box at the time. There's this new barrier to entry that is your TV's operating system, and that in itself stands to be really problematic. Then there was this issue recently where for an admittedly short period of time, some Roku TV owners had their TVs momentarily bricked because some server somewhere went down. And as a result, some Roku TVs went into a boot spiral and the TV was unusable for a short period of time. Credit to Roku for getting that fixed pretty quickly, but back in the dumb TV days, that's not even a thing that could happen. If a server went down, the worst thing that happened was you maybe couldn't stream something from an app for a little while, but you could at least watch another app or watch what was coming from your cable box or your antenna. Then my mind shifted to how frustrating it can be if your smart TV platform of choice doesn't get a certain app. Not sure if you are aware, but LG smart TVs didn't have HBO Max for over a year after it came out. Here you spend big bucks on this smart TV and you can't even stream Succession or Game of Thrones unless you hook up another device. And that line of thinking just opened up a whole can of worms. With smart TVs, you're at the mercy of that TV getting updates. At a certain point, maybe your TV just stops getting updates because the hardware isn't powerful enough to run the new platform. And you might say, well, yeah, it's like that with smartphones, Caleb, except people keep their TVs way longer than their phones. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not okay with their TV smart platform aging them out well before the picture quality takes a dive or the TV is otherwise ready to be retired. Then there's the quality and capability of the apps themselves. There's no guarantee that the HBO Max or Disney Plus app on your TV can do the same thing that it can on another smart TV platform or streaming box or game console. You're not guaranteed to get 4K, HDR, Dolby Vision, or Dolby Atmos, even though the services themselves offer those features. Now at this point, I wanna sort of interrupt myself and say I'm not just here to point out flaws. I do have some proposed solutions, but I think a lot of you out there have maybe run into an annoyance with your TV here or there. Maybe you thought to yourself, you know, that's a big hassle I wish I didn't have to deal with. And then you move on. But when you step back and add all this stuff up, I think it points to a pretty big problem that has yet to really blow up in our faces. But I'm worried it's gonna do exactly that if we don't start demanding a higher standard. But I'm not done yet, there's actually more. Hear me out. Security, I think, remains one of the biggest concerns that honestly, I don't think we're concerned about enough. I know we should be, but we don't wanna be. Many of you, I'm sure, remember the hacking convention where a smart TV was hacked and the audience was shown themselves looking at the TV 
through the camera on the TV itself. <laughs> Cameras on TVs, that's like a whole nother video. I'll have to get back to that, but hey, they're coming back. Back to hacking. A Swiss hacker actually used broadcast airwaves to hack a TV's browser back in 2017. Didn't even need to come through the internet. That's not good. And the FBI, believe it or not, issued a statement back in 2019 from right here in the great state of Oregon, suggesting that people recognize that their smart TVs were way more vulnerable than they thought and should take certain actions to protect themselves. Yes, the FBI got involved. Red flag much? Now, to be fair, smart TV manufacturers have been trying to make their TVs less hackable year over year. But to this day, a smart TV is probably the most vulnerable device on your home network. TV operating systems don't face the same kind of scrutiny that phone and computer OSs do, but they should. And if security wasn't enough to be worried about, there are now privacy concerns. TVs now come with many pages of terms and conditions most people ignore when setting up their smart TVs, and buried in all that copy is something about you allowing access to your personal data. Some of it is as simple as the shows you like to watch, and some of it is way more granular and personal. And sure, there are ways to turn this stuff off, but if you do, you get confronted with these doom and gloom messages about how this and that feature on the TV is gonna be disabled, which, kind of feels like a deterrent from doing something that you feel like you should do. Look, folks, I could go on and I may do just that later, but at this point, I hope you can see and agree that smart TVs are a mess. And right now, I'm not seeing signs of things improving. In fact, and I say this as something of a tech optimist here, I think things are gonna get worse before they get better. So what's the solution? What can be done about this? Should we all just throw our hands up and say, yeah, man, Sucks, life's tough, get a helmet. I say no, that's the opposite of what we should do. I have some suggestions on what could be done to make the smart TV experience better. And that would include ideas like smart TVs having a dumb TV option, kind of like we see in Sony's Google TVs. Ideas around platform standards, ideas around the government maybe stepping in and setting some regulations, which I know, the idea of the government getting into your TV is probably gonna set a lot of you off. We'll explore those ideas soon. But for now, I think the takeaway here needs to be that we just need to recognize that for all the problems that smart TVs have now, problems that we are aware of, there are probably an equal number, if not more issues that we haven't become aware of or are actively in the making now due to the way smart TVs are being designed and operated. So let's start with awareness. That's what I wanted to try to arouse with this video. And once we're aware, I think the next step is to take action. First, we have to be aware, and then we need to care, and then we need to take action. Let's talk about it right here and on forums. Make sure our voices are heard and considered, and then maybe we need to consider voting with our wallets. I reckon someone or some company is gonna step up and try to do better. And if we support that with our purchases, I think our money will do plenty of talking for us. Like I said, I have some ideas and I'm gonna share them, but ideas without action are just, well, they're just ideas, aren't they? Thanks as always for watching everyone. Please tell me down in the comments, what do you think should be done to make smart TVs better? Do you see this as a big issue or do you think I'm blowing things out of proportion? Let me know about it so we can talk about it. Oh, and here's two other videos I think you'll like.